Hello students welcome back to your english literature class in our previous session you had understood the summary of the poem dover beach by matthew arnold also you had learnt the background of the poem today we shall continue with the poem by the end of the poem you will be able to understand how dover beach is a dramatic monologue explain meaning of different words as used in the context of the poem explain stanza 1 in your own words and identify and understand literary devices used in stanza 1 before we understand how dover beach is a dramatic monologue let us first understand what is dramatic monologue Dramatic monologue is a type of lyric poem. A lyric poem is the one in which the poet gives expressions to his own feelings in which a single person who is not the poet utters a speech in a specific situation that makes up the whole of the poem. Whole here means all of something that means the content of the poem. The poet speaks through the medium of an imagined character and achieves the same objectivity as characterizes a drama so what is objectivity objectivity means the state or quality of being objective or fair it is in fact a long speech by a speaker who addresses someone whose presence is felt though he or she utters no word it is very important that there is only one speaker because it is a monologue mono means one so there is only one speaker but the presence of a listener is always felt the beginning of the poem is generally dramatic and abrupt now how dover beach is a dramatic monologue first of all the speaker in the poem is the mouthpiece of the poet matthew arnold but not the poet himself who is a mouthpiece a person who speaks on behalf of another person so the speaker in the poem is not matthew arnold it is someone else perhaps a lover dover beach opens on a dramatic note one special feature of dramatic monologue is that it opens on a dramatic note so the line 6 in the first section of the poem makes it clear what is the line come to the window sweet is the night air so it is a form of dramatic the imagine character or the speaker is presumably a lover standing at the window and describing the beauty of the seashore to his companion so here we come to know that there is another person in the poem which words in the poem tell us come to the window listen ah love and let us be true so these words tell us that there is someone else also present besides the speaker since dover beach is a dramatic monologue the action is internal it means the development occurs in the mind of the speaker himself there is no external development of the plot as is seen in the plays the development of thought is there only in the mind of the speaker i hope you have understood what is dramatic monologue and how the poem is dramatic monologue now let us discuss the difficult words in stanza 1 the sea the sea here refers to the english channel that separates southern england from northern france and joins the north sea to atlantic ocean in this image you can see english channel calm means peaceful coast shore or beach the moon lies fair upon the straits the water reflects the image of the moon as the setting of the poem is a moonlit night now what is strait a narrow passage of water that connects two large bodies of water 
which two large bodies of water are connected here we have english channel and the north sea which are connected by the strait of dover gleam shine dimly the light gleams and is gone here we are not talking about the moonlight we are talking about the light of faith in god and religion that forms the center of the poem we have already discussed the crisis of faith so this is the light of faith in god and religion which was once very strong and is now fading glimmering and vast reference to the enormous and sparkling white cliffs of england shining in moonlight tranquil quiet and peaceful bay a broad inlet of sea where land curves inwards now let's read stanza 1 the sea is calm tonight the tide is full the moon lies fair upon the straits on the french coast the light gleams and is gone the cliffs of england stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay we have already done in summary that the speaker is standing by the window and he is looking outside so what does he say the sea is calm tonight that is tonight the sea is calm and the tide is full the moon lies fair upon the straits the moon shines brightly on the whole strait which strait are we talking about yes the strait of dover on the french coast the light gleams and is gone the speaker says that the moonlight shines dimly on the french coast and then it disappears the cliffs of england stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay the cliffs of england stand firmly bathed in the moonlight they extend up to the calm strait now what does the poet mean to say through the lines the moon lies fair upon the straits on the french coast the light gleams and is gone he means to say that the light of faith in god and religion was once quite strong but now it is flickering then the poet looks back at his own coast here he sees the famous white cliffs which are composed of chalk now chalk is a limestone that erodes easily so the fact that those cliffs are eroding further develop the theme of weakening of light of faith also when the poet says that the light on the french coast is gone but the cliffs of england are still glimmering he means to say that if there is any hope left in the dark world it is to be found in england all these lines are an example of visual imagery visual imagery is the imagery that appeals to the sense of sight let us discuss the meanings of the next lines sweet is the night air the poet explains how pleasing the atmosphere of night is long line of spray large waves in the sea and the white foam that they produce as they fall on the beach moon blanched land the land made white or pale by the bright moonlight grating roar reference to the roar like sound of the rocks being pulled out and thrown back by the waves on the beach pebbles very small pieces of stones fling to throw or push something in a sudden and forceful way strand 
sandy shore cease stop begin and cease and then begin again here the reference is to the endless motion of waves when you observe the waves they never stop they keep on moving they come forward they go back and the motion continues with tremulous cadence it means trembling sound or the rhythm in the sound of the waves eternal means everlasting let's read the next lines come to the window sweet is the night air only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched land listen you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand begin and cease and then begin again with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in now there is a shift of mood in these lines in the first five lines we noticed how the speaker romantically describes the beauty of a moonlit night but from these lines negativity sets in with the images like moon blanched land now what does the speaker say come to the window so he is calling his beloved to come to the window he tells her sweet is the night air that means the night atmosphere is very pleasant only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched land it means a long line of water drops rises up from the sea to touch the land bathed in moonlight obviously the moonlight is reflected from the water and it is also on the land listen you hear the grating roar of pebbles now the speaker asks his beloved to listen to the sound what kind of sound he wants her to listen the grating roar of pebbles which the waves drew back and fling at their return up the high strand so he wants her to listen to the harsh sound of the pebbles as they strike against the shore when the waves advance or come forward when the waves retreat they throw the pebbles on the sandy shore of the sea begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence low when the waves retreat the rise and fall of waves in a set pattern produces a slow trembling kind of music which brings in eternal note of sadness eternal note of sadness means a note of melancholy which is ever lasting now students if you would observe in this stanza we have got beautiful imagery in these lines the visual imagery continues but there is a note of negativity that sets in along with this the poet has made use of beautiful auditory imagery by using the words like grating roar tremulous cadence and eternal note of sadness there is another important literary device used in this stanza that is called enjambment now what is enjambment it is a poetic technique where a sentence continues without a pause beyond the end of a line a couplet or a stanza the example of enjambment in the poem is you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand begin and cease and then begin again with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in so in these lines the idea starts from you hear the grating roar and it goes on till sadness in the poet has also made use of pathetic fallacy in these lines 
Now what is pathetic fallacy? It is a figure of speech in which objects are attributed human emotions. So it is observed in the poem where continuous and endless motion of the sea is attributed to eternal note of sadness. Now sadness can be experienced only by human beings. But here the sea is also experiencing sadness which is experienced only by humans. Begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. Your homework for today is to plan explanation of stanzas 2 and 3 with the help of your workbook. Thank you.